Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Lynn Bentley. I'm currently the Air Force uh, ROTC Detachment Commander at the University of Houston, uh, but my core Air Force Specialty Code, or AFSC, is that of a space and missile operator. I am on the 13 inside, which means on the nuke side. I started off as a peacekeeper ICBM officer at F.E. Warren, and then followed that up to go to Vandenberg Air Force Base, where I was instructor for the uh, ICBM systems, both REACT, CDB, and Peacekeeper. And, and, and I followed on with that with an assignment at United States Strategic Command where I worked on what was called the PSYOP, the Single Integrated Operational Plan and the development of that. So I've got about 10 years in the nuke business before I branched off into space and radars. So that's my background and I'm ready to answer all your questions. Well, both career fields have their ups and downs. Uh, the, the thing I like most about the missile career field is that I had a structure and a routine and I knew exactly what was expected of me. You read the step, you follow your checklist, you know what you're supposed to do. Uh, the space career field, more advanced technology, a lot more cutting edge things going on, so that made it far more interesting in that respect. Uh, if you're going into either career field, whether it's space or missiles, the key thing as a young officer is to know your job. Be a technical expert in that job, whether it's flying satellites or pushing buttons. Be a technical expert at doing your job. Uh, the thing that I liked most about missiles was it's the only job that I've had where I've known exactly what's expected of me. Because you're, you're, you're disciplined, you follow the checklist, and you succeed. The other thing in missiles, you had more time off in missiles than I've had off in any other job. You live your life one month at a time, but in that one month rotation where you're pulling your alerts, you get a lot of time off, a lot of time to spend with your family, or as your young officer probably begin developing a family. Seems to be a theme here about the location of these bases. Uh, well, yeah, there, I mean, if you're a winter tier kind of person, then the base locations are great. I'm not a winter person, so I didn't care for the cold. Uh, um, now, there are a lot of great things happening in the 13 in career field. Uh, it's received some uh, added attention at the highest levels of our government, which pr that's for bad reasons, but a lot of good things are coming of that. There's now missile pay is coming down the line, and so there's some great things like that that are, are really happening for the career field. I think the, uh, the attitude and the appreciation of the missile career field is now getting, uh, getting the, the, the real tribute that, it, that it's needed for many years. So there's a lot of good things happening in the missile career field. It's a great time to become a missile leader. Nope, you just get to go to Malmstrom, Minot, F.E. Warren, that, that's, that's it. After that, life is over. Uh, no, there, there are other base assignments uh, for missile leaders. Um, uh, after you do your initial assignment at one of those missile bases, you could always end up going to Vandenberg Air Force Base in California and be an instructor out there. Or uh, you could also go to Omaha, Nebraska. If you transfer into space, that opens up a lot more other avenues. There's positions in D.C. So you're, you are not limited to just those three bases. Of course, initially, that's where you'll be, but afterwards, you'll see some more opportunities branch out as you become a senior captain and then a major.